in Italy, there was a young man who was just about the right age to get married. And so he talked to his parents, and he said, you know, I've been watching the gardener's daughter. She's so beautiful, and she's so nice. I'd like to marry her. And her parents, uh, or his parents thought a little, and they said, that's a good idea. We like her, too. We'll talk to her parents. So they did. And it was agreed that the young man and the gardener's daughter were going to get married. And they did, and it was a beautiful wedding, and they had such a good time at the party afterwards, until someone noticed that there wasn't any more wine to drink, and that was a pretty important thing to have at a party in Italy in those days. And so the young lady, because she was the bride, she wanted to show that she was a good hostess. She said, I'll go get some more wine. Don't worry. So she took the pitcher and she went down into the basement to this big vat of wine that was down there. And she turned on the spigot and set the big vase underneath, or the pitcher underneath it, and sat and waited for it to fill. And while she was waiting, she was thinking, I'm so happy. I'm married now. It's wonderful. And oh. Maybe someday now I can have children. Maybe I'll have a son. If I have a son, maybe I'll name him Bastianello. Oh, that would be so exciting, Bastianello. That would be so nice. Oh my goodness, but what if I had a son and I named him Bastianello and then one day he died? Oh, what if he died? Oh, I would cry. Oh, I would cry. Oh. And she started crying and crying and forgot all about reason she had gone down to the cellar, forgot all about the wedding, forgot all about the wine and everything. And she just sat there crying. Uh, well, after some time went by, her mom noticed that the bride was missing from the party and she thought, maybe I better go check on her. So she went down the stairs and she saw that the pitcher was very nearly full of wine and sitting next to it was her daughter, just crying and crying and crying. And the mom said, whatever is the matter, my dear daughter? And she said, oh, <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, now that I'm married, maybe I'll have a son. And if I have a son, maybe I'll name him Bastianello. But what if he died? Oh, what if he died? Oh. And she started crying again. And this time her mom joined her and cried too. They forgot all about the wine. And after a little while, the father thought, my wife and my daughter are missing. Maybe I should go down into the cellar and check on them and see what's wrong. Maybe the vat isn't letting the wine out or something. Everybody's getting thirsty up here. I better check. So he goes down into the cellar, and by now, the wine pitcher is overflowing with wine. There's a little puddle beside it, and it's still pouring out of the vat. And the, the husband looks, and he says to his wife, what is going on? She's like, oh, <laughs> you've got to hear this story. <laughs> and so the daughter tells her father the story. And her father starts crying, too. Oh, if you would die, I, 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 I. You know, some more time went by, and finally the bridegroom thought, where in the world is my new bride? She's missing, her mom is missing, her dad is missing, and we still don't have any wine to drink up here. I better go check on them. So he goes down into the cellar, and by now there's a lake on the floor of wine. It's still pouring out of the cap and flowing out of the base. And all three of those people sitting beside it just crying and crying and forgetting all about the wine. The bridegroom looks at them and says, what in the world is going on here? <coughs> and the bride says, oh, you know, I'm so happy that we're married, but I was thinking that maybe one day we'll have a son and we'll name him Bastianello. But then I thought, what if he would die? Oh, if he would die, I would cry. <laughs> and the bridegroom his new bride and he said, that is just about the silliest thing I have ever heard. First of all, we just got married. We don't have any children. We don't even have a son. We have a man named Bastianello and he most certainly isn't dead. <sighs> I don't think I can live with someone that's so silly. I'm going to go out for a long, long, like a couple weeks walk and see if I can find any other groups of people that are as silly as you all. First, I'm going to turn off the wine. So he got together some bread and tomatoes and a bottle of wine for himself, and he said, if there is anybody else in the world as silly as you, I'll come back and we'll have a family and, and stay together. But if not, I just don't think I can live with anyone this silly. So he set off walking, and he walked for days and days and days and days, and everyone he met was just perfectly normal, just like him. And he thought, oh, well, that was close. I almost married somebody really silly. And then one day he got up, 
And as he was walking, he saw in the distance a well and a man ladling water out of the well really quickly like this. And when he got closer, he saw that the man was soaking wet, just drenched, because he was sweating, because he was working so hard, scooping water, scooping water, scooping water. He got closer, and he said to the man, why are you working so hard to get water out of the well? And the man said, well, I'm really thirsty, and I have to take some water home to my family. And the traveler said, well, what's the problem? Why, why is it so hard at work to get the water out of the well and into your pail? The man said, I don't know. I've been scooping it out with this sieve all day long. How many people know what a sieve is? Do you know what what's a sieve? A bucket. Do you know, Jason? No. It's kind of like a pot or a cup or a scoop, and it's drilled full of holes. It's a great thing to wash cherries in, maybe, if you want them to not like fall through. Is it a great thing for dipping water? No. no. The man is scooping the water out of the well, and he only had a few drops in the bottom of his pail. Well, the traveler, the young bridegroom, said, you know what, just wait a minute, I can help you. He goes over to the neighbors, knocks on the door and says, excuse me, could I borrow a bucket for a minute? Thank you. And he takes the bucket and he lets it down into the well, fills it up, pours that water into the man's pail, takes the bucket back, here's your bucket, thank you, and goes back to the man at the well. The man at the well wiped his sweat and said, oh, thank God you came along. I don't know how long I would have been here trying to scoop water into my pail with this sieve if you hadn't come. As the traveler, the bridegroom, walked away, he thought to himself, that was just about the silliest thing I've ever heard. That's one, silly. That's sillier than my silly wife. And he kept walking. The next morning when he got up, he was walking down the, down the road, and up ahead he could see a tree, and under the tree was a young lady, and she was holding a pair of pants, like this. <laughs> and after a little bit, someone dropped out of the tree. It was a man in a shirt and underwear. <laughs> And he missed the pants and climbed back up the tree. And she said, it's OK, honey, try it again. And she held the pants. And the man climbed back up the tree and jumped and missed again. Now, when the traveler got up to them, he said, what are you trying to do? And the man said, oh, every day it's like this. I'm just trying to get my pants on. And I think I'm going to be late to work again. And the traveler said, here, let me help you. Now lean against the tree. So the young man leaned against the tree. And the traveler took the pants from the young lady. And he held one leg under the man. He said, here, pick up one foot. Now put it in here. There you go. OK, pick up the other foot. Put it in here. OK, now here, you hold these and pull them up. And the man pulled his pants out. Whoa, that is the fastest I have ever gotten dressed in my life. Thank you so much. And his wife said, my arms were exhausted. We've been trying this for about two hours. And this morning, he just kept missing. So I'm so glad you came along. And as the traveler walked away, he thought, OK, that's two groups of people that are sillier than my silly wife and her silly parents. Yeah. <coughs> well, the next day, he was walking and walking and walking. Everyone he met was normal. And the day after that, as he was walking, he came to a little town, and in this town, there was a wedding just getting ready to happen. And in this particular town, there was a tradition that at the wedding, the bride had to ride into the town on a horse before the wedding. Well, there seemed to be a problem. Do you know why? This particular young lady, the bride, was very, very tall. And the horse that they had chosen for her to ride was also very tall. And the gate for the town was very short. And so they would start her riding in on the horse, and she would smack into the gate. And so they'd have to back up and try get riding in on the horse and smack into the gate. Oh. And she was starting to get a little bruise right here from bumping into the gate. Well, when the traveler, the little the bridegroom, saw what was going on, he said, what's happening? They said, oh, well, see, in our town, the bride must ride through the gate. And the young man who was going to marry the tall young lady, he said, I know what we'll do. We'll just cut off the horse just a couple inches off of his feet so he can go through, and then she'll get under, and it'll be fine. And the horse owner said, oh, no, I don't think so. This is a really nice horse. We're not going to do anything to my horse. Maybe we can just take a little top off the bride so she can fit through the gate. And then you bride, little the young bridegroom said, I don't think so. And the traveler said, wait, I think I can solve all your problems. So he snuck up behind the young lady, smacked her on the head. She ducked. And as soon as he did that, he kicked the horse. And the horse took off running. And they got under the gate just in time without any.
anybody losing any appendages. Well, as the young man went walking away from there, he thought to himself, you know what, that is the third group of really silly people, much sillier than my wife and her husband, or her parents, I mean. So he decided he would go home and he would stay as her husband and that she wasn't as silly as he thought maybe she was. So he went back to her and they had a wonderful family. In fact, they had a son and guess what they named him? Bob Busta. They named him Bastianello. But he didn't die. He 